So Liverpool are out of the FA Cup and the quadruple dream has been left in tatters by a 4-3 defeat to Manchester United at Old Trafford in the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. And you have to say, my feeling is that that is really a deserved defeat that Liverpool have suffered today. I've always said in these games, these big games against Manchester United, arguably the biggest game in the English football calendar that really, you know, playing at home is a massive level and no matter what level the sides are at when they come to meet each other, the, the home aspect of it tends to level things up and I think we've seen that many times down the years, haven't we, with Sir Alex Ferguson's side coming to Anfield and getting turned over by Liverpool sides that were nowhere near United at that time and what we've seen today is a Manchester United side who was sat sixth in the Premier League and on zero goal difference, 17 points behind Liverpool They've levelled things up at Old Trafford and, and put on a performance that really didn't sort of evidence the, the gulf between the two sides. And they've come away with a with a victory that keeps them in the FA Cup, going to a, a semi-final against Coventry at Wembley. And Liverpool obviously bloodies their nose, takes them out of any chance of a quadruple. And of course, knocking your biggest rivals out of the FA Cup is always a satisfying one. But as I say... I feel like it was a deserved defeat for Liverpool. There is a gulf between these sides, but they only really showed it in brief periods across the entire game, across what ended up being 120 minutes. I mean, I thought the best period of the game really was obviously they fall behind early, go 1-0 down, and and, and Anne really got going really at the start of that game. United flew out the traps and made it physical and quick. and Liverpool couldn't really cope with the pace, and they obviously didn't have the crowd on the side either as well, so that never helps. Uh, but I thought Liverpool sort of st- started to get to grips t- uh, with things towards the end of the half and that tells in them scoring goals. I mean, I, I tweeted during the game that I thought Liverpool, you know, when they were 1-0 down, were lacking a little bit of composure and I thought Quanta showed that around the first goal. He dribbles forward, doesn't he, into the United box, takes a few players out and then he's a cutback and, and, and Liverpool score from that. And that composure had been sorely lacking. And I also thought that Liverpool hadn't matched Manchester United's intensity in those early periods. And then again, straight after levelling things up, Joe Gomez in a pressing situation sets it up. Ball falls to Salah and he does the rest. And then Liverpool are, are 2-1 up going into to half-time at, at Old Trafford. And, and you know maybe if they hadn't deserved it on their overall performance, you felt that they were, they were getting to grips with the game. They were going to get better as things went on because... You know, let's get it right that they are absolutely the superior side here and, and you thought that having got the noses in front that that would really change things but absolutely wasn't the case and, and United kept coming they always seemed to, to be in the game at all points and then you know they run out winners in the end at extra time just you know run away with it and score in the, the final seconds but this, there can be no argument that this was maybe a, a lucky win of United hitting on the counter because you look at the statistics from the game you know, 28 shots to 25 in United's favour, 3.36 expected goals to 2.06 again in United's favour, four big chances to one big chance in United's favour again. I mean, one statistic that Liverpool do come out on top is, is, is passes. They make 610 to Manchester United's 386, but I think that says a lot about the fact that Yes, in periods Liverpool really did look in control. They looked like they were bossing the game and sometimes that United couldn't get out. But you always felt like it was in the balance. And, and one of the reasons for that is that you know United, when they did get those brief moments to put counter-attacks together, always looked threatening and always seemed to end in a shot or a decent half opportunity even when Liverpool snuffed it out. And another reason that you felt United were in it was because Liverpool, you know, they were leading 2-1 for so long in this game. They just couldn't put it to bed. And I, I thought a really... Poor performance from the attack really was a big part of that. Now, you know, you might look at the, the the XG totals and think, well, Liverpool were just actually blown away in attack, but that doesn't really sort of show you the reality, which is that Liverpool were getting themselves into unbelievable positions so frequently in that second half when they were two one up, and just the final pass wasn't there, so they weren't generating high quality shooting opportunities from the actual space and, and opportunities that they created and that was I think that was a huge problem because it, you know you go to 3-1 then United's heads completely drop don't they you don't think they've got a chance anymore to get back in it and then you don't go to extra time where, where United you know probably look the, the, the fresher in that period as well and I think you know that is another factor it's worth talking about in this is that Manchester United don't have a game in midweek do they Liverpool go fairly strong against Sparta Prague maybe the wisdom of that Jurgen Klopp doing that could be questioned on this basis actually but that freshness started to to tell us that as, as the game went on and I think you know particularly the fact that Liverpool have been carrying so many injuries of late haven't they and they've got through a really busy period maybe we saw, 
saw the sort of consequences of that really and I think if, if the attack had played slightly better if those that final pass had been better at the right moment and Liverpool go 3-1 then I really don't think that, that United have a chance of getting back into this game fresh legs or otherwise I think they would have been sort of mentally destroyed by that moment so that's one of the, the huge disappointments from this for, for Liverpool and speaking about disappointment I think you know a big consideration from this now is is there going to be a mental impact for Liverpool losing in the last seconds in a game you you know you will feel that you should have won and had in the palm of your hand with was it three minutes of normal time remaining and you go on to lose it in extra time, you know will that have an impact particularly coming against your biggest rivals as all well? you know another element of this is that Liverpool have now got two weeks haven't they? obviously a lot of the players will be on international duty but you know even those who are will maybe stew on this defeat a little bit and feel it so it's all about you know. Can they produce a response? Because obviously next up is Brighton after that international break. They want everyone to come back from representing the country's healthy. That's number one priority, I'd say. Uh, but then it's, you know, can they can they react? Can they show a reaction to, to what is, a, you know, no getting away from it, a, a hugely disappointing afternoon for them. So I suppose if you're looking for upsides from this, and, and there are a few, it's that a lot of players are going to be coming back now. Obviously, Gravenberg was on the bench the first time in a while since that horror challenge he got in the Carabao Cup final so that is a boost we know Curtis Jones will be back after the international break and then after that really really close to behind him not you know maybe a week after that Diogo Jota Trent Alexander-Arnold and, and Alison Becker are really close as well so a few boosts in there as well so Liverpool's squad is going to look far healthier when they come back from the international break or certainly the week after that as well and maybe you know it could be a blessing in disguise not to have maybe what you know what would possibly have been two Wembley trips come to to throw into the fixture list. Obviously, it would have been Coventry City in the next round. We now know off, uh, off the back of the draw, and that looked a handy draw for Liverpool. You have to say, but you know to not have to put the energy into to an FA Cup semi final and then know at the end of the season you've still got to contest an FA Cup final as well. You know maybe there is some upside in that not having to fit the fixtures in, even with that FA Cup final, it would have been. The last game of the season, but you know Liverpool will know now that Europa League final that they can put everything into that. Don't have to have an FA Cup final in the minds. Don't have to protect the players for that. And I do think that would have been a consideration. I think you saw in Klopp's subs today. He does have to think sometimes a game ahead, or or in terms of what what the be, the players have been through as well uh, in terms of his team selections and his substitutions. He does have to consider the fatigue element. Whereas you know that Europa League final, he won't be if Liverpool were to get there, he won't have to think about an FA Cup final there. And as I say, not fitting in that that semi final somewhere that can be a blessing because you're moving a key Premier League game and let's have it right, they're all key at the moment. You're moving that to a midweek and I think that instantly makes things more difficult because you just don't have that recovery time. So, like I say, could be a, a blessing in disguise and I am trying to dig out the, the upsides of this 4-3 defeat to Manchester United. It, it is quite difficult, but you know, let me know in the comments what you think about all that. Now, I'm going to get into the the individual performances now and, and talk about how I thought everyone played in this game. I start, of course, with the, with the goalkeeper, Quivine Kelleher, and I thought... Look, he, he concedes four goals in a game. Here. No, no, never an ideal afternoon for a, a goalkeeper. That is, no getting away from it. But I, you know, a lot of these, I, I don't think he could have done a lot with really. I mean, he, he concedes four goals from four point zero nine xg goal or expected goals on target. So that's about right, really. I mean, anything he saves above that would be would be sort of over performance. He still, you know, he, he posts seven saves a, a, a across the the game, which is which is decent. He does dig. Liverpool out quite a few times actually in the in, in the games and and so you know I, I think it would be very very harsh to, to criticise Kelleher I thought it felt a lot like you know United when they were scoring they seemed to find the corners a lot particularly that last one when you watch it dribble into the far corner so frustrating for a goalkeeper because no matter how good your positioning is sometimes if it's going to hit the post and go in there's really not a lot you can do there even if you're at the Alisson Becker and again don't want to take away from the fact that Quivine Kelleher when he's coming to the side here to replace Alisson Becker this season has been absolutely phenomenal in this run, hasn't he? And kept Liverpool in, you know, in the Premier League title race, you know, helping them in the the League Cup to win that, and also in the Europa League, he's been massive as well. So again, don't like I say, don't want to be too critical of him for conceding four goals here from what were four, basically four goals worth of opportunities for Manchester United. You know, if you're going to let them have that many shots, then goals are going to go in. So. As I say, pretty you know a decent performance from Kelleher given what was going on in front of him. Now move into the defence now and talk about Joe Gomez. And I thought, to be honest, kind of surprised he was in the starting eleven. I thought Bradley would have been a better fit for this game, just with the intensity he brings on the defensive side of things. And Joe Gomez, 
he's very composed, but sometimes that can go against him in terms of not finding the intensity. And I think the statistics kind of bear this out a little bit. Four out of 11 ground duels won. You know, he did seem a little bit lax at times. I mean, the one time he didn't is when he, he presses the ball high up the pitch and wins it for Liverpool to, to score those quick two in, uh, it, you know, just before half time. He, 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 a real important pressing situation around the second goal there. But I just don't think he sort of replicated that intensity across his performance. I didn't think he was particularly fantastic. I thought, you know, United, a lot of their threat came down the sides and maybe he was involved out there as well. So didn't think a phenomenal performance by any means by Joe Gomez. But again, he's another one who's done really well recently in a series of different positions. So don't want to be too harsh on him. And I suppose don't want to be too harsh on the team as a whole, actually, in terms of how they performed recently. This really was a, a bad day at the office for a few of them. Now, I'm just going to the centre-halves now and, and talk about Drell Quanta and, and Virgil van Dijk. And for me, I think one of the biggest issues for these two players was that they were too busy, really. I, I didn't like what was going in, on in front of them. But you know, you look at the individual statistics for what they were producing and they weren't actually doing uh, too too badly there. And I think, you know, you look at Quanta, four out of five aerial duels, one he really does well in that aspect. 91% uh, in passing accuracy as well. So, you know, winning his duels, he's keeping the ball well. Some really nice, actually, crossfield balls from, from Quanta. We know his passing range is really good, and he showed that a couple of times. And what he produces for around the equaliser is absolutely phenomenal. That dribble up through through the Manchester United defence when they're holding on to a 1-0 lead. You know, that was the composure I was asking for in those moments when Liverpool weren't playing well in the first half. And it comes from Quanta. It was very, you know, Joel Matip-like what he did there. And I think, you know, for a young player to be doing that in, the, in, a, in an environment like this, playing at Old Trafford away, I think says a lot about him. And as I say, you know, he won his individual duels. I just think he and Virgil van Dijk were, were, were left quite exposed through a lot of this game. And you don't want to blame them too much for that because, like I say, they were, you know, individual duels, they were doing okay. They were, they, they, you know, but it's just what was too many balls were getting fired in behind them into dangerous positions and not a lot they could do about that. I mean, van Dijk's statistics, three out of four aerial duels won. But 16 defensive actions, he, he did really well in a lot of those defensive actions, but you do not want him to be that busy, you know what I mean? He is he is the best defender in the world, but can you reduce the amount of defending he has to do? And I don't think Liverpool did that well enough. So, as I say, I thought the centaurs did okay, really. Just what was going on in front, in front of them was a, a little bit of a mess. And I'll just finish up the defence now with, with Robertson. I thought he was... One of Liverpool's biggest threats early in the game, actually, with his crossing. He wins three out of his four duels, brings that intensity I'm talking about in defence as well. So, you know, in, in Liverpool's best periods of the game, he's on the pitch. So, again, you know, not a, an overall poor performance from him. But again, it, what was going on in front wasn't great. It was it was too easy for United to knock balls in behind the fullbacks at times as well. So they were getting dragged everywhere. There has to be better pressure on the ball there. And I think... You know, talking about pressure on the ball, I will get into the midfield now, and I do think there were there were some issues there. So Endo, I think, you know, have been phenomenal this season, but again, you know, didn't didn't think this was his best game, and I think he was part of that issue that Liverpool had in terms of getting close to United's midfield and putting pressure on. No doubt the fatigue is a part of that, Liverpool, and all these players have got through an awful lot. And I mentioned that at the start of the video that United were fresh, having not had a midweek game in the build up to this, but. You know, it was the consequences of that were, were quite clear during this game. I mean, Endo wins four out of his eleven ground duels, eighty-eight percent passing accuracy. You know, I didn't think he used the ball particularly fantastic well, and, and that ground duels number is usually way over fifty percent in that and winning most of them. And you know, if you win your ground duels in that area, you tend to dominate the the, the game. And I, in fairness, I think there were periods where the midfield were doing really well and were dominating the ball. You know, as I say, they made a lot more passes compared to United, but just that control didn't always feel there and you know you hold the midfielder you 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 want him to be a big part of that you know again I think he'll look back on the goal that Anthony scores and think did I get tight enough did could I have won the duel there and, and probably didn't so didn't think Kendo was was particularly uh, fantastic today but again you know he's played so well this season been a, one of the signings of the season hasn't he so rare off day for him and I think similar with Soberslai as well I think he had some issues in winning his ground duels as well three out of eight won and I think, you know, he, he, he we know he can be better. I think he's still getting back used to the intensity after the injury that he's had. Uh, there were some really encouraging signs against Sparta Prague, but, you know, there's more to come from Sober's line. I hope we see it in the next few weeks because, you know, he's working his way back now from injury. Hopefully he can come back from international duty and not pick up a fresh uh, muscle issue. He, he also worth mentioning he has four shots as well, by the way, here, which, you know, he, he got a lot of opportunities to shoot in decent positions. And, 
you would have liked him to do slightly better in terms of putting those away because you know he's got it in his locker but you know sometimes that can happen now the one midfielder I thought did play very well was Alexis McAllister United tried to put the press on all the time he still ends up with a 90% passing accuracy four chances created and, and crucially and this is the one that made him stand out for me he wins seven out of his 12 ground duels so he's above that 50% mark he was getting stuck in. He was. I thought he was using the ball really well under pressure as well and, and winning his battles. It's just a shame that the other two alongside him, that didn't kind of work out for them. And that's where Liverpool's lack of control at times uh, really came from, is not winning those 50-50s, not getting stuck in. And But you, you couldn't level that at McAllister. I thought he had a, a decent game. He also, of course, he gets a goal, to, it's a, you know, gets a deflection, but it's a, good, it's a decent strike, well set up by Nunes. So... Um, yeah, it, it, I thought he was easily the, the best of three midfielders. I think if the other two had got close to his level of performance, I think Liverpool would have won this game at a canter, really. Now, I'm going to move into the, the forward line. I'll start with Mo Salah because obviously he comes off it early. I think it's a real shame he goes off early because, again, I think Liverpool will probably win it if he stays on the pitch and that threat is always there. Um, you know that that is frustrating that he's still managing this injury, isn't he? You've got to be careful with a muscle issue. You can't just leave him on the pitch. Um, that is um, yeah, a shame they couldn't keep him on because you know you look at the, the numbers he he scores the goal of course um, which is which is crucial always great to have him on the pitch for his goal threat but takes three shots creates three chances as well and as I say he's just a, an absolute nightmare for defenders so when you take him off you instantly become weaker and that was a real shame that Liverpool had to lose him and I think again another factor in you know Liverpool have had all these injuries recently They've got to manage the players in this way but that has really not helped them in terms of winning the game today. They've not been able to completely go for it and, and, and the manager's not been able to leave Salah on the pitch. So that's a, a real shame. And just moving to centre-forward position now and talk about Darwin Nunes. And I'll be honest, not one of his best days at the office, I would say, today. I mean, he still gets the shots away. He always does, doesn't he? Six shots and he creates two chances. And I thought, actually, the ball he pulls back to McAllister uh, for, for that goal is is absolutely brilliant. A real moment of composure for, from him. And some of his build-up play in the first half as well was actually really good. But he ends the game with, with a 54% passing accuracy, which I think shows you that not everything kind of came off for him. And he does have six shots, but doesn't, you know, he's not pulling out world-class saves from Anana or, or really testing things. And I just did think he was quite ineffective and clumsy in the build-up at times, even though some of his build-up in the early stages of the game was good. It kind of fell away massively. And I think, again, you know, with some of that, the fact he's been injured recently and he's missed some games, you know, you, you do wonder if that's a factor in it. He only wins seven out of his 18 duels, and I've no doubt that some of those dual losses will have come later in the game when he, when he probably looked like he was tiring and probably shouldn't have been on the pitch. And I think the one thing you could probably criticise most from his performance is the way he gives the ball away for the, the goal for three all. That's, you know, manager will be so frustrated with that. Liverpool have the ball in the left back position with Nunes. He just needs to pop it off and then, you know, walk up the pitch and, and Liverpool can, can get out of a dangerous area. But he tries a, a ball inside that the United intercept and then Liverpool can never get straight from that position and the ball ends up in the back of the net. And again, it's all about game management in those situations, isn't it? Even if you have to punt a 50 50 up the, up the pitch. Maybe that's a better option than trying to play a square ball in such a dangerous area. And I think Nunes will have to learn from that. I'm sure the manager will mention it. It's absolutely something you shouldn't be doing. But again, you know, again, I think he's one who, who you know, fatigue was an, an element of his performance today, no doubt about it. Uh, but hopefully he can get that one out of his head in the international break and come back fit and firing because you know I think his form recently has been very very good and uh, you know a real uptick in that. So if he can sustain that over the running, he's going to be a big part of Liverpool winning trophies and we hope he can. Uh, now I'll finish off the, the starting eleven with Luis Diaz and again he's another one I didn't really think had the best game. I mean he ends up with four chances created and four shots, but I still think you know some of those shots weren't that dangerous. Some of the chances were not necessarily in great areas. Completes two out of three four dribbles, which again, you know, again shows up well in the numbers in it. I did think he did well in again, he's always good at this. Getting the ball up the pitch for Liverpool. He massively is a part of that. But you know, not testing with the shots, not maybe creating the right chances, it, you know, it, again, you just come back to fatigue. Liverpool have been so good in attack. That's why I don't want to be too harsh on these attackers. Liverpool have been so good in that area this season, they've been utterly prolific, and all these players have been a massive part of it. 
So the idea that this this suddenly rubbish now, I, I, I can't subscribe to that. But like I say, that final pass was just off or the shot wasn't right, was getting dragged or, you know, it, it just makes you think that what they've been through recently, the fatigue, the emotional fatigue that they have for, for what's been an incredibly busy period, that has got to be a factor in it all. So that, that signs off the start in 11 anyway. And I'll just go through the substitutes as well because I think some of them did have a big impact in this game. And, you know, Liverpool have won games off the bench so frequently this season. It's a, a shame they weren't able to do that. I'll talk about Harvey Elliott for starters. Obviously gets his goal again. That gets a deflection. That's a little bit of good fortune, but it's well worked in terms of to get himself in the position to shoot. And I thought he was quite good actually in, in creating those pockets. He always generally is. You know, he gets two shots and two chances created in his time on the pitch. And I thought... You know, when Liverpool were on the ball, he's he's really really safe in terms of that, and and, and helpful in terms of allowing them to keep possession in dangerous areas, um, and and so improve Liverpool's on the ball game definitely when he came on. Obviously, scores what should have been the winner if Liverpool could have seen it out, but unfortunately they don't. They they, they give a goal away, and then around the four three, when he looks back on that situation, the the winning goal from Marcus Rashford, I think he'll. Um, uh, sorry, not Marcus Rashford from from Ahmed Diallo. I think he'll be really, really disappointed because the ball gets cleared from a corner. Liverpool have thrown too many men forward, admittedly, but Harvey Elliott tries to take a touch in a situation where if he just pumps the ball up in the air, Liverpool can get themselves set again. Um, he's just trying to be too exact in that moment, and and that leads to the counter attack and, and leads to the the game being won by Manchester United. And, Again, don't want to hammer him too much. He's been great this season and he is still a young player who's going to make those sorts of mistakes. I know he plays like a player who's much older, but he is going to make those mistakes when he is still just a kid himself. But that's a moment he'll look back on with, with a bit of regret. I've no doubts about that. Now, move on to, to Connor Bradley. Again, You know he's left all at sea for the 4-3 goal, isn't he? It's absolutely not his fault. He's the one man who's left back because Harvey Elliott doesn't punt the ball, so you don't want to criticise him for that. And he actually is the one who, with a little dribble on the inside, sets up Harvey Elliott's goal for 3-2. And I thought he was pretty good when he came out in general, actually. I thought, you know, wins four out of five ground duels, brings that intensity that Liverpool were looking for. You know, I would have been talking about this as an important substitute appearance, actually. And similar with Elliott, actually, if Liverpool go on to, to win the game, but they give that goal away through Nunes, then they give one away from a from a, an att- a corner they were attacking late in the game. It just changes the whole thing. But I think... You know, you have got to say on the face of things, those substitute appearances from both of those players could have been absolutely crucial to Liverpool winning it. It's a real shame they weren't. Now, a couple of other substitutes to get through. One is Cody Gakpo, who I've seen is, is taking a lot of flack on social media. And I'll be honest, I didn't think he was great when he came on. He gets one shot, one chance created. But some of his decision-making in the final third was, was very, very poor. And I do feel like he's suffering from low confidence at the moment. I was hoping that that would maybe be helped by the fact he gets two goals against Sparta Prague in midweek and that would maybe really help him out. But clearly that's not happened. I thought he was you know, really ineffective when he came on the pitch and, and made some poor decisions in possession. And, you know, he needs a little bit of a reset because, you know, Liverpool need him to be playing better than he is at the moment. And it doesn't really, isn't happening. One thing I will say is, I don't think Gakpo should be singled out because I, you know, I went through a lot of the forwards today and don't think many of them really played particularly well. So a bit harsh, I think, for him to get the blame for this, particularly when there were other areas that were poor for Liverpool. But you know, his form really does, as I say, need a little bit of a reset. And hopefully he can maybe get that over the international break. And the final sub I want to talk about is Kostas Simakas. Not hugely involved in the time he's on the pitch. Only makes five passes and completes four. But... He has three cross attempts and, and completes none of them, which again, you know, I think he was brought on to bring a bit of balance back to the attack, give Liverpool more chances to attack down that side, but just couldn't find that 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 cross that would, would really win the game for Liverpool. But again, like so many of them here, you know, in this squad, been a huge part of what Liverpool have done in recent weeks, and you can't forget that when they have a bad day at the office, which maybe this is what this was for Liverpool. We certainly will hope so because they've got so many big games coming up after this international break, a two-week break now. But when they come back, it's all about can they get over this quickly and add the Premier League title and the Europa League to the League Cup that they've already won this season. This will be very, very easy for Liverpool to get over if they go on and do that. And of course, 
part of that running is a return trip to Old Trafford. So if Liverpool could win that, then again, I think this makes it really, really easy to get over. Now, let me know in the comments what you thought of Liverpool's performance today. Do you think that's going to have an impact on them men mentally losing that game? Or do you think with the players coming back that they can be refreshed going into the running and go on and win the Premier League title and the Europa League? Let me know what you think. And as ever, I'm going to ask if you can like and subscribe. Always massively, massively helps out, particularly subscribing to the channel. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. Don't have many defeats to get into this season. So this is a rare one. So it's usually a bit more upbeat than this, but we've had to uh, pick the bones out of this defeat, unfortunately, this time around. But do subscribe because I'm sure there'll be plenty more wins to come. And I'll keep the videos coming in the international break. So many talking points to, to look at and, and a real look at that running, actually, and who's the favourite out of Arsenal, Manchester City and Liverpool. So that'll be coming soon. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you soon.